So we're going to jump into part two of the video of where we left off. So let's carry on. I'll shy away from it. I know a lot of people think I try to justify it or, or, you know, make excuses. And I don't. My past behavior was deplorable. It's unacceptable. Um, no lady deserves to be treated that way. Um, I absolutely slapped her in the thigh on the, with the remote after, you know, a interaction with her and it was wrong. I don't make excuses for that. I should never have made empty threats. Like there's no excuse, but that was eight years ago and I can't convince anyone other than what they want to believe, but that's the truth. I've never tried to defend it, excuse, make any excuses for it. I owned up for it. He has, yeah. you know, and, saying doesn't, you know, he's, he has, we've, we've tough, seen the excuses. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot, to, a lot of stuff that went behind the scenes, but I wouldn't dignify my, I wouldn't try to justify my actions with trying to show all this backstory and everything that was going on in that time period, because it's not fair to her or anyone else to try to then justify, you know, in my opinion, that's an example of toxic masculinity. Um, whenever I was re scared and hurt, I used anger instead of just communicating my real feelings. And that's where it became toxic. So there's a, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, so I just I, I just want to take it uh, just piece by piece here, just for a moment. Um, so just you said a lot in one. Just go. for the audience out there, I, mm -hmm. I just I just want to know. Trying so to like you people. you said that you, like you don't really feel like you need to justify, but you've been justifying it. So like what how how has everything that's been happening over the past year and a half, and with all the stuff about your divorce and everything else, and all these details coming out, um, how has that affected your your real life? Um, really that part hasn't really affected anything in my real life. I think some people don't realize that I have really done the work that I said online. And now, um, on Monday, they'll be able to see a video with me and my ex-wife, Andrea. She's one of my, uh, realtor partners who refers me a lot of business. And I'm very proud that our relationship has come full circle and we're back to being friends again. And, you know, co-parenting and my son lives with me. I have, I have custody of him and I have for the last two years and, um, you know, it's been a good evolution. So it, that part. I'm going to pause it right by there for a moment, mostly because he has just said that he's got custody of his son and he's been living with him for two years. Does Monica and Ron live together or no? Because we've got that video of Monica literally from like two weeks ago. Where she's saying, my stepson's been coming to visit me. Or come to visit us. Interesting. Part of it hasn't really affected my life. I have had people try to email my company and employers and other stuff. Making, you know, pointing yeah. out the court record. But that was a civil dis dispute. There's, an, I'm a licensed loan officer. So if I had ever broken any laws or committed any crimes, I literally couldn't be licensed. So, right, yeah. It well, was, like, you know, but it hasn't really affected my day to day life in a, in a sense okay. that it is more distress and, you know, frustration because I want to talk about it because I feel like it's an opportunity to share that. Yeah, there's times where you can be screwed up and do stupid stuff, but then you can make changes in the future, you know, like, yeah. like we like we never, ever done any stupid stuff in our life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mistakes are made you try to move forward look at the best side of things and yeah, yeah. And, and part of the reason that i wanted here i uh, wanted you to come on today i mean a bit a bit selfishly um is because i i wanted to help you out a little bit as sure. well because i mean i know that we've like uh mr hop and i have gone through a, a fair bit of of dramatics ourselves, and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and something centering uh. around uh, things that are beyond your control but uh, mm -hmm. one thing is, I wanted to I wanted to bring on you on here and and help you out a little bit as well because some of the tactics and things that we've gone through, I think kind of cross over in different respects, and I, I'm seeing a lot of mistakes that you're making that mm -hmm. uh, I made years ago, and I, mm -hmm. I wanted to try and I, I'm not here to tell you what to do, and I'm not I'm not here to t try and convince you to to do X Y or Z. Right. But uh, but one one of the questions I have to ask you, if it's not affecting your real life. Um, then why do you keep going on like like YouTube comments or websites and and trying to convince people and trying to trying to justify to people that have made it like pretty clear that they don't care? Right. Um, that's a fair question, and I honestly really do appreciate your uh, efforts because um, I'm not really well versed on internet stuff and mm -hmm. 
you know, social media. When I first started my Twitter a few years ago, um, Monica had to tell me that it's okay for people to follow you because I thought they were creepy. I'm like, who are these people following me? This is, they don't know. <laughs> who are <laughs> these people? Are Why are they following me? Just yes. that, what's going on? I'm all confused. <laughs> and so I had no idea. And and it the thing is, it's not necessarily affecting me, but it does, in a sense, affect it subconsciously because if you go into Google and being a, a person that has to have some level of social presence because of my job, if you Google my name, the videos that come up are all of these like tabloid looking mm -hmm. things. That just, it's not nice. And I've, and some of my realtors have received stuff um, from people making just horrible comments. And while they, they actually know me and I, they, they, they know it's kind of just, people being people yeah so I go on there one because i want to um i know that's probably people's opinion stupid, which he said he doesn't mind what it is them. um and second i i don't like i know that people think about cancel culture and that's a big thing i don't know either side seems a bit cancely you know what i mean it's like i just want to share my opinion and and clarify some issues when i feel like it's going to a, an extreme um because people are they can make uh, accusations or or they can make opinions about me all they want. Um, uh, I've seen abuser, this thing, that. That's their opinion. They, it's justified, I guess, if they want to say that because of the, you know, my previous court stuff. Yeah. But I just, it's sad that that just civil discussion can't happen. It has to be to the extreme, you know what I mean? Like, without even having a chat with somebody. But that's kind of why. And that's kind of like, it's because it's emotionally charged, right? I mean, right. it's been going on, both sides have been trading blows for, for so long. And I think there's a lot of people that have a lot of a lot of emotion invested in it, and they don't really know why, right? right. I mean, like you have it, obviously, because you're in the middle of a situation with your fiance. Right. Um, and the, the other side of this has it, obviously, because they were affected by it. Right. Like, but that party and and his immediate friends and family. Right. Um, but you have you have like all these supporters on both sides that, you know, they they want to cheer on their side. They want their side to win. They've right. picked a, whatever else. And I, I, I agree. I mean, there's extremes on both sides. And I think we both need to calm is, down yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, we've uh, we've seen a little bit of nonsense happening with the with the coronavirus keeping everybody indoors and, right. and uh, <laughs> people getting a little bit stir crazy and bored. A little um, bit nuts. Just a little bit nuts. Uh, but hopefully that lights at the end of the tunnel pretty soon. But mm. um, honestly, though, like I I really like to see this situation get better. I mean litigation stuff aside right because that people people can like, judges can rule on things and people will still have their opinions after it i mean just look at the oj trial it will yeah. that it will always happen that happened and then years later civil litigation and things mm -hmm. changed but the fact of the matter is it's like in order for this emotional scarring to heal on both sides we, we need to sit down we need to talk this to yeah. a point i mean there's a lot of stuff that's being discussed but I got to ask you, because like I have you on the stream, like I have right. you on the show right now. I have to ask you, Ron, at what point are you going to stop letting people that you're never going to see in your life have a control over you? Mm, that's a great question. I like challenging questions because it, it's, it puts you in a weird spot because it is a level of control because I have to respond. Um, you don't well, have to respond. Do, do you yeah. really have to? See? That's the that's the conundrum. <laughs> sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. You don't well, have to respond to anything. I went through on a, on a very personal oh, level. Is mm -hmm. that, uh, I had a social media manager and mm -hmm. basically told me just not to say anything. Yeah. And that's, of that's course, the, the thing is, as, as Crumb could completely confess here, um, I, I'm a bit of a closet attention whore. I like yeah. like the attention. I like getting mucked in there. I like you know putting people back in the place, especially one hundred percent. And when I was given this advice. It was like completely a 180 what my natural aptitude is. This right. is so what happens. The thing see? is that didn't say a word. Not a single, single word. And if you um, if you know anything about Mr. Hop eventually, um, it's very difficult for him to say nothing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it is a challenge because, you know, it's hard to sit, sit back and and let people just say stuff because um, I'm, I'm from a military family, so I've traveled yeah. a lot. And being <laughs> a, a, a when I was a kid, I was a very scrawny little Irish guy who moved around everywhere. So mm -hmm. fighting was something I had to do all the time. And you're a new kid every six months into a new school, 
So bullying is something I've had to deal with. So some of the online stuff is like, if I sit back and say nothing while they're saying something, is that fair to me? Because then I'm being told I can't say anything. And it's that weird dichotomy again. So with that there, that's always my advice to everyone. Do not respond to people. Because when you respond, you are doing exactly what they want you to do. Now with YouTube videos, again, as many people, as many of you know, I just say my opinion. I've given my opinion on both sides. Obviously, I am firmly behind VM. However, I have stuck up for people on KV because I call it as I see it down the middle. But the majority of videos that I have done regarding Ron and everything else is basically I've I've just been calling out the hypocrisy of things that these people have done. And if you don't speak up about it and you haven't got opinion on it, then again, there's no point in me having a channel on YouTube because it is. My channel is a commentary channel. I've talked about everything from VM to Star Wars to Batman, you name it. I've talked about it. But the gist of all my videos have been regarding VM and the things that people are saying on their site because... When you get people who are literally saying complete and utter rubbish which can be debunked with photos, with video evidence and also with people who are in these supposed things, this needs to be told and this needs to be to let people know. However, with Ron, I can see what he's saying and to an extent I agree with him. However, that's the, that's the key word obviously of this video is going to be however. Just let him get on with it. I've told people so many times in DMs and anything else, just ignore them. You know, if, if they come to you and they say something and it hurts your feelings, block them and get on with them. I've come to a point in my life now where I'm literally like, you know what, I don't care. Let people say what they want. Who cares? I make a joke of it and again, I'm like, yeah, whatever, it's done. Last I say on the subject sort of thing. And... Ron is older than me, so he should kind of know about that. You know, when you get older, you really just don't care about people. But, not about people, but you know, about what people say about you and stuff like that. And with Ron, he should really be like, yeah, you know what? We're not going to carry on. Let him say what they say. But it seems to be, like, even though he has said all the stuff he done in the past is gone, he's done it. You can still see that he's still got an inkling of it. You know, he wanted to beat up someone last year. You know, I'm going to see, I'm going to punch you, I'm going to do all this. And he's saying now, like, oh, they're saying things about me. I should fight back. That's what he's thinking straight away. He's automatically resorted to, I must retaliate. I must retaliate. It's like, no, you're absolutely correct. And, and the things, absolutely. And then at the same time, a mind of things, it's kind of weird how our, uh, how, how our lives are sort of like parallel. Because the thing is that, again, when I was growing up, um, my, uh, my mother's ex was a military man. Um, yeah. Basically traveled a lot from place to place, and again, sort of the same type of scenarios. You know, someone comes up and says, "Hey, who are you?" It's like, yeah. "Well, who do you think I am?" What you know, time it, time it is, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah. the thing is, that now we're still living in this digital age where everything is there for like ever and ever and yeah. ever, and it's oh, I know now. Yeah. documents. It's like, oh, hey, <laughs> right? <laughs> like back a few yeah. years ago, again, part of my forward language, you can tell someone to go fuck themselves. Yes, and, and right. then up at the end of it, and the thing is, it again, you know, they or, or you get into a fight, you punch them in the face, yeah. and they punch you in the face, and you just walk away. Yeah, it's, it's, it's done. Yeah. Nowadays, it's like, well. Remember that thing that happened back 12 years ago? What? Yes. And that one thing that happened back 30 years ago? Yeah. What? <laughs> yep. yep. Statue exactly. of limitations does not apply online. Right. So. And, and that's where it's like, it sucks because you're right. And in my experience, usually after I had a good fist fight with somebody, we ended up being buddies afterwards. <laughs> done. You know what I mean? Yes. You handle it, it's over, done. And so that's the, that's like the weird in a sense, like buildup that's online is that you get this tension buildup, but where's the release? Where's the punch in the face, yeah. bloody nose, and then let's hug it out, you know? Yeah. It yeah. doesn't happen. And, and you let it go and you walk yeah. away from it. And yep. it's done. It's done. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, and now in today's time, it's like, geez, say one, say one wrong thing to the right. wrong person that follows you pretty much for the rest of your life. Yeah. And that's the interesting thing about online too, where I know in the beginning people were like saying, well, I'm just asking a question, mm -hmm. but what was weird for me is I'm not used to Twitter. And so if one person's asking it, 
it, it made me think of the images in movies where like you have a schoolyard of people <laughs> circling around someone ask like like chanting is how yeah. i felt sometimes i'm like what the fuck i, yeah. I don't need this many people how am i getting thousand tweets a day yeah asking the same thing? <laughs> i didn't know there was a thing as freaking bots and alt accounts and stuff like that i didn't know it was anything and then i found out you can buy them on for twitter for like 50 bucks you can buy a thousand bots yeah it's like oh okay yeah. amazing <laughs> <laughs> if I could go back in time, I probably wouldn't have replied to all those people. Yeah. Was like I still believe the same thing, but I probably wouldn't have engaged that many people. Yeah, they were tweeting at me I'm like I gotta screw you, don't tweet at me. And now I know how Twitter works. So, yeah. well, the, the funny thing is when I first started, started offended, but <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure. Will he say why? <laughs> it's kind of funny because I first started Twitter it was the exact same thing. It's sort of like yeah. you know, I'm always used to getting uh, direct messages, stuff like yeah. that, and all of a sudden, in, in the dark parts of of the Twitter sphere, there's this uh, yeah. little at, it's like at recep it. Um, are you still coming over to my place today? And it's like I get this message like two weeks later. It's like what? So yeah, was yeah, this? No, totally relate. Totally yeah. relate. Well, it's it's uh, it's it is really interesting because I I mean I've I'm not uh, I'm not super religious myself like I'm mm -hmm. I'm a pagan I'm practicing pagan, awesome. um, and so I'm, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a branch from Christianity here a little mm -hmm. bit from that lore, so like the internet from you so it's totally fair exactly if turnabout's fair play, yep. so the, I, I'm gonna say like the the internet was kind of like the the apple from Eden right we took that we took that apple and we've taken a bite from that apple we can't go back to where we were before like right. this like, from both yourself and Mr Hop are from like a different era where things were much different in terms of communication we're in a much different world of communication now where literally everything that like there's no like there's no way 30 years ago you could have looked you could have looked ahead in the future and said what I do today is going to determine my like what like something that happens like 40 years down the line this is right? going to follow Rod, so, monica and vm it, around to the end that, of the that's games. the thing and i didn't want to ask it's really gonna, quickly, that's, so just, that's just, just people out there again, are wondering it's a digital um, age were you the one that was commenting on come geek some uh, videos and stuff like that oh yes and i did create a kiwi farms thing and made some comments it took an act of congress to get uh, verified on there so we finally got that i just wanted to make sure just straight, straight from your mouth before anybody else were we're questioning about that so yeah no, that was me. yeah so to go back to, to the to the other point like we're in a different age of communication now mm -hmm. and and all that stuff so like it's i know it's difficult because like i'm at that age now like i'm not uh, i'm not as old as mr hop but um Stop we, have, it. we have about a generation between us but uh-huh um, <laughs> So I'm at that age now where where my my growing up and my my term like my way of educating and and, and all that stuff and communication that's changing before my eyes. So like right. that's it's it's different for me. So it's weird for me too. But I'm seeing like I am seeing the moving pieces, right? So the things are, things are like so I, I like to take a, I like to take a a bit from my practicing religion as well. So like as I I look at the nature side of things, mm -hmm. you look at what you can control, right? And I can't get stressed out about every leaf that falls off the tree. I can't get stressed out about every squirrel that crosses the street, right? right. I can't control nature. I can't control water. I can't control wind. I can like I can contain it for a brief amount of time, but right. at the end of the day, nature is going to go at its own pace. Right. So when you look at when you look at and apply that to life, you can't control what everyone else does. You can't right. stress out about what everyone else does. And so like like you said, you know, by me asking you that question and and you thinking that you had to reply to it, the correct answer is no, you don't have to reply. Right. You don't have to answer things that people ask you. And you, exactly. at the end of the day, if, uh, you know, Johnny123 on Twitter or Instagram has something negative to say about that you. Johnny guy. <laughs> you you don't need to make it. a video or you don't need to make a response to it. Right. right? So my, my like my question is like how over the past year and a half I guess how have you been dealing with that change like learning and understanding and, and making progress to changing the way that you communicate? Well, um, I would say sometimes successfully, sometimes not. But I do read a lot, um, and I know some people m joke about it, but I try to read at least one or two books a week, um, and really trying to work on professional communication. And not that I always am successful, it's just uh, an effort, but, you know, yeah. picking and choosing battles. Um, sometimes it's fun to engage. That's the whole carnal nature of things. Uh, again, the tempting fruit that you brought up and, you know, uh, it's interesting to think about the fruit in itself. If we even go back into further about it, if it 
more about the fact that it was more probably more indicative of sex and then the addiction of that and internet and the re release of endorphins in our brains when we engage in fights because yeah you know cortisol is a an addictive thing and for me when my fight or flight mechanism kicks in it i'm not a flighter i'm a, definitely a fighter come and most of that was a kind of put into me as a young kid i grew up uh, physically abused uh, my parents loved me but you know they they learn that type of behavior from you know their parents and their parents but when you can't go to school for a few days because you got belt marks and extension cord so marks systematic your abuse face, going back generations in family the person for a little bit but yeah when you deal with that you feel like that's the behavior you need to do to control situations and so balancing that feel a rush of emotion of i'm under attack so what is my natural mode default aggressive go after versus yeah. sit back and what you've wisely counseled through some of these suggestive questions is maybe just sit it in the drawer old lincoln style and just give it three or four days to simmer before sending that message or that tweet or that video would probably be wiser counsel but sometimes i'm good at it sometimes i suck and that's just how it is sometimes it so we're going to finish the video by here. So we we got we have got one more video to go on this because I can see you know he's only on for the first hour. I've been told so you know literally got like twenty minutes left, so another video to go. But it's very interesting to see how he has gone from like I said in the last one from last year to now. But he said quite a few things in this segment of the interview, which is very it's a head scratcher. Like I said. We've seen Monica put the video say that, you know, she's literally going to kill Ron because they're spending too much time together in quarantine. And even though she loves a significant other, they're engaged and whatnot. But she said that she had her stepson come to visit him. But then in this, he's saying, I've had custody of my son for two years and he lives with me. So who lives with who? Does Monica and Ron live together? Because... This is what we've supposedly heard from both of them. And it's very interesting to see that he's got that uh, flight or fight uh, scenario going. And he's staying with, no, I always got a fight, always got a fight. This part of the uh, actual interview, I can agree with Ron 100% on a lot of stuff. Mostly because, again, when he's talking about social media and the way it is, I totally understand that. My last job, I was, before I became a freelance editor... I was a social media manager for one of the biggest companies in the UK. So I know a hell of a lot about everything he's talking about. And with the mechanisms when he's saying about, oh, i got to reply, i got to say something to him. You haven't. It's the best way to do it is literally let someone carry on. Yeah, okay, whatever. Let him say it. You know better and that's really it. But again, no, when you get thousands of different bots coming, and again, we see them on both sides, but... When you have people on KV saying certain things about VM and when you can back that up with evidence and say, actually, you're wrong. This is the person in that photo you stole, which is going to be very interesting to see if they actually bring that kind of dynamic up into the interview later on. Because obviously we've seen quite a few people on KV say, oh, look what they're doing, look what they're doing. And then that person's had to come out and defend themselves saying, no. I wanted that video done. I wanted that photo taken like that because I love it. You know, VM, I love him. But it's going to be very interesting. And before we finish the video, I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, but a lot of the key instigators on KV has been a lawyer. We've had Mars Girl, who was supposedly works in the entertainment industry and has friends at Funimation. You've got Renfamous, who used to work for the Republican uh, Party, who her job was to go online and cause chaos, really. That's exactly what her job was. And you've got Dominique Sky, who is a cosplayer, who actually tries and just literally belittles anyone who does anything. Those are the people there. But if you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for future updates. And I'll see all you wonderful people soon.